7.8.6.1 Radio Roa. Welcome to day 6 of 7.8.6.1 Radio Roa. Me and Mola's super fantastic Mahara Manan radio show where we're delving into Ruang Dwarf Tita. Yesterday's umbrella watering can game was a barrel of love. <laughs> it ended up with us really getting a feel of protection from Allah and also what it felt like to have no protection because the whole family ended up drenched. Totally. Moving along with Dua Ertita, we now enter a beautiful part of the Dua where each paragraph begins with praise. Alhamdulillah. And each praise is specific to what is being discussed in that paragraph. So the continuous praise is happening just like the name of the Dua. Continuous opening, continuous praise. Exactly! Let's hear this part, please, Nabiha. Alhamdulillah, alladhi lam yattakhidh sahibatan wala walada wa lam yakun lahu sharikun fil mulk wa lam yakun lahu waliyun min al-dhul wa kabbirhu takbira All praise is for Allah who has not taken a wife nor a son, has no partner in his kingdom, has no friend to protect him from humiliation. So magnify him with the great magnificence. The praise here is specific to Allah being the king of his kingdom. He doesn't have any partner, no family, no son. If he did, he would favor them. And then he would not be just. So that's just not possible. Allah doesn't have family. Just like in the Surah Ikhlas. Spot on, Radia. High five. Let's listen to Surah Ikhlas. Say he Allah is one. He is upon whom we all depend. He doesn't have children or a mommy or a daddy. And there is none like him. Thank you for that, Radia. What we understand is how Allah does not have anyone to lean on to help him with all that he does for everything in the world. There isn't another God. He is the only one and only creator. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. You know, sometimes when people want to advertise for something, they will try and make their idea by saying, only one of its kind, the best, you can't find this anywhere else, etc. Mola Mahdi Jan is teaching us to see how Allah is the only one. He's the only one who made and manages the kingdom, the mulk. So magnify him with a great magnificence. And then everyone says, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Nobody can argue with him. Nobody can hurt him. Nobody can destroy him. Nobody can do anything to him. It's his kingdom. He has no partner. Exactly. I know just a story from the Holy Quran that tells us how Allah has no partner and we worship our wonderful only one and only creator. Hi guys, it's a story time! A long time ago, a king ruled the land. His name was Nimrod. He was the first king to make gold and silver coins. He thought his ideas and his ways were the best. 
he began to think he was God. One day, his advisor, Azar, came very worriedly to him and said, a baby is going to be born who will destroy our people and our idol-worshipping religion. Nimrod tried to stop all babies from being born, but sure enough, a baby was born. When Azar, the king's advisor, found out about it, he wanted to tell the king immediately. But because the baby was his brother's, his brother and his wife Sarah convinced him otherwise. Sarah took her baby boy Ibrahim to a cave outside the city. She prayed to Allah and trusted him to look after her baby. She visited him often. Allah protected him and angels cared for him the whole time. Allah can do anything and everything. When Ibrahim was 13, he could not remain in the cave anymore. The sun was setting. Ibrahim followed the path outside the cave and came to the city gates. He asked the guards the way to Azar's house, where his mom lived. When Azar found out who Ibrahim was, he was shocked. Sarah convinced him not to worry. Azar Ibrahim's uncle softened his heart towards Ibrahim. The next morning, Azar decided to take Ibrahim to the temple to offer thanks to the gods. Now, all these years, Ibrahim's heart had spoken to none other than Allah. He worshipped him. When they entered the magnificent temple, Ibrahim was amazed by what he heard, what he saw, what he smelt. There were so many idols and lots of people. Azar joined the priests and for hours prayed to the idols. Ibrahim watched in amazement as they spoke to these idols for hours without answer. They offered gifts and the idols just stood there. You are my stone idols. Give me what I want. Give me food. Give me money. Give me yummy, yummy. Give me toys. Give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me. Hmm. He. Ho. Ha. Ibrahim approached some priests and asked kindly, What are you worshipping? Now, remember, he had been in a cave all his life, and this was his first time to see such. They said, we spend our days worshipping them. Do they hear you when you call them, Ibrahim asked? Or do they help you or cause harm? Azar came and said, we do not know, but our fathers and grandfathers did so and we copy them. Ibrahim had seen enough. A god must be powerful and wise and hear the du'as of the worshippers. A god must be active in providing for the people. These idols are lifeless forms. Azar grabbed Ibrahim and quickly took him home. At home, Ibrahim asked his uncle Azar, Do you take idols for gods? Azar was furious, but he controlled his anger and said, They are not gods, but representations of the gods of Kuta. Kuta is the place where they live. Azar said, I will take you to the gods of Kuta. Ibrahim looked forward to this meeting. He walked with Azar back to the temple. They went to the terrace at the top. Ibrahim saw people worship a star in the sky. This is my Lord, but soon enough the star disappeared. Ibrahim said, I don't like those who set. Soon after, 
the priests turned to the moon and began to worship it until the early hours of the morning. Ibrahim said, This is my Lord, but the moon too disappeared. Ibrahim said, If the Lord does not guide me, I will be misguided. The priests turned towards the east, and as the sun began to glow, they began worshipping again. Ibrahim looked at the sun and the explosion of light and said, This is my Lord. The priests worshipped all day. However, at the end of the day, the sun set just like the moon and the star. Ibrahim said, I don't take partners to God. I turn my focus to the one who made the skies and the earth, Allah. With this certainty, Allah made Ibrahim a prophet. The angry priests surrounded Ibrahim. They threatened him with their God's anger. The gods could not even speak or guide them. I don't fear your gods. These idols, the sun, the moon, the planets, have no power if left to their own. Everything belongs to Allah and he can do anything he wants. How can you expect me to be afraid of your idol gods and you are not afraid of making partners to God? Who is feeling safer right now? You with your idol god or me with my Allah? The priests and the people had no answer. Their faces were dark with what they believed. Azhar quickly took Ibrahim home. Upon reaching home, Ibrahim asked, Why do you worship that which can't hear, see, or help you in any way? Knowledge has come to me. Follow me, and I will guide you to the straight path. Ibrahim wanted Azhar to know that he was a prophet. Azhar now was super angry. He said, Get out forever! Ibrahim said kindly, Peace be on you. I will plead to my Lord to forgive you. And Ibrahim left. In the following years, Nabi Ibrahim tried to talk sense into the people. Only a few listened, but he never gave up trying. Come my people, one and all, your best friend is Allah call out to him he loves you very much and he gives you the gift of life worship him let us worship him then once there was a festival to remember the idols all the townspeople were going to the edge of the city to have their idol worshipping festival. Nabi Ibrahim did not go to the festival. In fact, he was one of the only ones who stayed behind. When all the people had left, he went to the temple. He saw the idols. He saw offerings of food and sweets. Knowing fully well that the idols don't talk, he asked, Why aren't you eating? Why aren't you speaking? And then, with his club, he chopped down all the idols except for the biggest one. He put the club around the biggest idol and left. Later that evening, when all the people returned to the city, they went to the idol worshipping room. They asked, who did this to our idols? Nabi Ibrahim said, why don't you ask your gods? Why don't you ask this one? He has the club. They said, you know very well they can't speak. Then why do you worship them? Asked Nabi Ibrahim. They can't do anything for themselves, let alone for others. Worship Allah. That is better for you. I believe in one God. I am a monotheist. 
I am a monotheist. I believe in one God. I am a monotheist. I am a monotheist. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he Allah is one. Allah has samad. We all depend on him. Lam yalit wa lam yulad. He has no children, no mommy, no daddy. Wa lam yakul lahu kufu wan ahad. And there is no one like him. I believe in one God. I am a monotheist. I am a monotheist. I believe in one God. I am a monotheist. I am a monotheist. The people could not answer Nabi Ibrahim. They had nothing to say because they knew he was right. Suddenly from the crowd, people shouted, Burn, burn him! him! Burn, burn him! him. Azhar, the uncle and the priest of the people, ruled that he should be burnt. Now, don't worry. Do you know who Nabi Ibrahim is friends with? Does a friend leave a friend in difficult times? No. Nabi Ibrahim's best friend is there for him and for us if we take him as our best friend too. Let's see something amazing. Azhar asked everyone to bring lots and lots of firewood. Everyone in the city helped bring wood. They built a huge, huge fire. It took a year to build and was so huge and high, the fire reached the sky. Birds could not fly above the fire. It was so high. Nimrod and Azhar came and watched from a special viewing tower that was made especially for this occasion. They put Nabi Ibrahim in a catapult. Nabi Ibrahim called out to his best friend. He knew he could trust his best friend. He knew he could count on his best friend. I can count on Allah for anything. He'll be there, he's a friend that cares. I can count on Allah, he'll help me through. He'll be there, he's a friend that cares. Count on Allah, best friend he is. Count on Allah, best friend he is. I love you, my bestie. Friends, don't let each other down. They stand by you no matter what. Nabi Ibrahim was catapulted into the fire. As Nabi Ibrahim fell into the fire, Allah said, Ya Naru, O fire, Kunu Bardan, be cool, wasalama, and peaceful, Allah Ibrahim, for Ibrahim. And in an instant, the hot fire became a peaceful, cool garden. When Nabi Ibrahim landed in the fire, he felt like he landed on a super soft carpet. He did not feel hot or get burnt at all. Allah, Nabi Ibrahim's best friend, made plants and fruits of all seasons grow around so he could eat and enjoy. That's what friends do. They will do anything for their friend. And just like Nabi Ibrahim did everything to stand for his friend Allah, Allah did the same for his friend Nabi Ibrahim. Nabi Ibrahim stayed in the garden for three days. After that time, the fire began to go out. When Nimrod and the gods climbed the viewing tower to see, they saw the garden and Nabi Ibrahim sitting there enjoying this haven. Nimrod and his gods were in shock. Nimrod was mad and very angry. He ordered the gods to bring Nabi Ibrahim out. Then he asked, 
Who is your Lord? Abi Ibrahim said, My Lord is he who gives life and death. Nimrod said, I am the one who gives life and brings death. If that is the case, then since God brings the sun from the east, you bring it from the west, requested Nabi Ibrahim. Nimrod was furious and helpless. He could not defeat Nabi Ibrahim and his ideas. He could not even burn him. Nimrod forced Nabi Ibrahim to leave the city. Nabi Ibrahim said he would go to a place where he could worship Allah freely and may he grant me good children. Allah heard his friend's dua and from Nabi Ibrahim came the family of Prophet Muhammad. The purest of family with the purest of heart. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Before this earth was even born. Bright lights in the heavens shone. Years later we then found out. Angels did this chant shout out. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad born in the elephant's year. He loved Allah and never did fear. Last prophet declared was he the best person there could ever be. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Ali the warrior, very kind at heart. With Quran reciting, his life did start. Helpful to Prophet always around. In Najaf, his holy grave is found. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. The best woman in this world is she. Perfect mother there could ever be. Fatima, the apple of prophet's eye, at the age of eighteen said goodbye. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. This holy Imam of our second. Never consider him weakened. Strong and peaceful two in one. Beautiful Hassan killed by poison. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Last one of these holy five.
said to save Islam, Hussein did strive. Dedicated to him, Muharram Safar. Whenever sad him we remember, Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Muhammad Ali, Fatima, Hassan, Hussein. These are the ones in whose love we will remain. Nabi Ibrahim moved to a place where lots of people passed through for work. He spread the message of truth about monotheism and believing in one God far and wide. Nabi Ibrahim never forgot his friend Allah. Nabi Ibrahim was so kind he never ate without a guest. He would look for people to share with. His friend Allah loves that so much. Every morning he would say, I wake up praising my Lord who has no partner. He would look for poor people to feed. One day, he went searching for somebody to share his food with. He could not find anyone. When he went home, Angel Jibrail was there. Angel Jibrail said, Allah sent me to award somebody a very special title. Khalilullah, friend of Allah. Nabi Ibrahim said, please tell me who it is. I want to serve that person all my life. Angel Jibreel smiled at Nabi Ibrahim and said, You are the one. Nabi Ibrahim was shocked. <laughs> Allah took Ibrahim as a friend. Wow, isn't that amazing? Wouldn't you like Allah to be your best friend too? That can be our 2T twist for today. 2T think and thank twist. Would you like Allah to be your best friend? And how are you going to go about it? Sounds like a great 2 tea twist for today. I have some guidance from the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, our favorite book, tells us how. Be completely for Allah, Mimman Aslama, Muslim. Can you hear the same sounds? Aslam, Muslim, Aslam, Muslim. And be Mohsin, a doer of good. Wattaba'a millata Ibrahima. Follow the faith of Ibrahim, the Hanif, upright one. Now, all this talk about idols reminds me of a very, very funny story about a fox. In the time of Rasulullah, one of his good friends, Abu Zar, told him this story. When he was a young boy, he traveled with people to Makkah. Everyone was giving food and drink to the idols. Abu Zar was asked to place a plate of milk for Manaf, the idol. He did as he was asked. People carried on worshipping the idols while he watched from the side. Then the people began to leave. Abu Zar decided to stay and watch from behind a rock. He watched the idol and the milk. The idol and the milk. A little while later, a fox came along and drank up all the milk. And then do you know what happened? The fox peed all over Manat the idol. Eww! Exactly! Eww! Thought Abu Dhar. If the idol could not protect itself from the fox and its smelly pee, then how could it protect him? This really puts this part of Dua Iftita and its praise to Allah into perspective. Let's continue our look at Jannah from the Holy Quran. GPS Jannah. Sir Wakya continues to talk about the flowing stream we will be able to drink from using our cups.
with vessels or goblets and jugs and a cup from a flowing stream. How do you imagine this flowing stream from which you can drink? Where is it in your Janna? What color is it? Get your stick back and let's get drawing. That was GPS Janna. Imagine and create this beautiful place you've punched into your GPS. How about a nice Fox Town Twister for today? Let's remember the amazing friendly companion of Rasulullah, Abu Dhar. Yes, that sounds like fun. Forest Fox feasted and finished the idol's food three times fast. Fox feasted. Furious Fox feasted and finished the idol's food. <laughs> listeners to act out the story of Abu Dhar and the fox. That's a brilliant idea, Nadia. Let's take Nadia's advice and make a fox mask with a paper plate, some paint. Let's get creative. Then, after iftar time, just before you recite Dua Iftita with your family, act out the story of Abu Dhar and the fox and talk about that part of Dua Iftita. Draw a tiny little fox in your Dua Iftita book to remind you of this super funny story. That sounds like fun. I can't wait. Nobody can wait. Can I be the fox? Absolutely. I'll be Abu Dhar. And mommy, you can be the idol. Oh, you too? <laughs> you know, for today's wise words from the animal kingdom, why don't we look at foxes? I have just the thing. Wise words from the animal kingdom. Foxes are so agile and have such finely tuned senses. Watching foxes can teach us how to constantly use our senses to praise Allah. Foxes are really good at noticing patterns. Day and night is a pattern that we can see so easily, for which Allah does on his own. No partner, no help, no assistance. Let's take notice in the pattern in Allah's master design. That's a continuous recognition of His power and oneness. And therefore a... Continuous praise! Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Exactly! Thank you, Nadia. Amazing insight! Times are running out! Enjoy your own personal family theatre show today and tune in tomorrow on... 786.1 Radio Roar.